Welcome to Best Binocular Reviews. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at mostly the external features on these Helios Nitro Sport 8x42 binoculars. For the full review that contains far more information, please, to sure, please be sure to click on the link either in this video or in the description below. Whilst a really simple accessory, I do quite like the um, rain guard or eyepiece cover um, on these Nitro Sport binoculars. Um, as you can see, it's made from a, a soft plastic or rubber and as you can also see, it, it, they fit really nicely onto the um, eye cups themselves, so don't come away too easily by accident. On top of this, they have a nice flexible bridge in between the two um, cups themselves. Um, this allows you to easily store them um, no matter what IPD setting you leave your binoculars at. You know, there are some manufacturers out there that will have a, a, a rain guard that forces you to, to open up the binoculars every time you want to replace them, which you know, is, is, a, is a small thing, but you know, can get a bit annoying over time. The objective lens covers um, look to be made from the same sort of soft rubber or, or plastic material as the uh, rain guard and like the rain guard they, they too fit really nicely over the ends um, of, of the lenses here and so you know it shouldn't come away you know as uh, too easily you know, you know by accident when you're walking around um, they have these little tabs on the top here um, so it makes it easier for you to just flip them off and what I, I do like, and a common feature these days, is the fact that they're they're actually tethered to the to the barrels of the binocular. This means that they're always handy, you know, um, for you to quickly replace after you finish glassing. Uh, you know, the alternative being that in the old days that you you take your your covers off and and put them in your bag, and there's just one extra step um, to, for you to replace them, and just means that um, if you get a bit lazy. You, you would leave them off and it would just mean more chance of your, your lenses either getting damaged or probably um, more chance of them just getting dirty. And the more often or the, the least often you have to clean your lenses, the better. These Helios Nitro Sport binoculars feature an open bridge body design. And by that we mean that there's um, in between, um, most binoculars would, ha would have a single bridge connecting the, uh, the, the two barrels together. Whereas as you can see, these have two uh, thinner ones, one located uh, more towards the top and one towards the bottom. This frees up uh, an area um, in the central part uh, of the barrels, which um, can be a nice area. So if you were carrying the binocular single-handed or something like that, it it's a nice secure um, way to hold it um, and less chance of you, say, dropping them. Uh, I guess in theory um, it, it also could mean a, a weight saving because of the less material but um, I find in reality it, um, whilst these are quite a light pair of binoculars um, it doesn't always uh, mean that a, a double bridged design or open bridge design um, is lighter than the single one in, and because I think it's because of that is the, the two bridges then, um, more than make up just for the single larger bridge in, in terms of weight. Um, all in all, uh, the actual shape of the body um, and the, the, the feel of them is, is really nice. Uh, I feel that these binoculars are, are nicely, nicely balanced. They feel you know, really nice and comfortable in their hands. When I hold them and, and, and um, I'm glassing with them, you know, it, they, just, you know, they just have a nice positive feel to them. These binoculars, like almost all modern um, optics, have a, a rubberized coating um, that covers the, the, the chassis. And as you can see, um, the black coating on these um, covers almost the entire chassis, apart from the two bridges over here. The, the rubber itself um, is, is relatively thin, um, as well as quite hard um, and quite smooth. So the, the fact that it's, it's thin and hard um, means that uh, the, 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 the downside to this means is, is that you, you obviously get a little less um, impact protection than you would from a rubber that's um, softer and, and, and um, provides you know, a, a, a more cushioning. On the positive side, um, the softer rubbers um, I found um, tend to um, perish more, more easily and, and are a lot less um, longer lasting than, than a harder rubber. Um, as you can see, the, the actual rubber itself is also quite smooth. Um, quite often um, these days, um, if, if, if the rubbers are hard, um, manufacturers will imprint a, a texture, sort of say similar to how we have on the focus wheel over here, um, just to add to the grip levels. Whereas these um, are, are still um, you know, quite, are relatively smooth. Um, apart from the grip, um, this sort of uh, smoother, hard surface, um, I don't know if you can see on the, on the video, it just um, 
it adds, it reflects a bit more light than you would if you had a softer, um, more spongier rubber, which um, absorbs light. It's a very, very minor point, but you know, if if you're looking for the a, a really camouflaged pair of optics, and um, that's a, a, perhaps for some people like hunters out there, uh, just a point to consider. I like the fact that the um, objective lenses are positioned a little a little bit back from the ends of the binocular. As you can see over here, there's a you know there's a little overhang. Uh, this provides a, a little bit of protection to the lenses. You know, should you actually place them down on the table. Um, or even when you're just carrying them about, um, they, they're protected by the ends of the, the binocular. On top of that, this, um, the overhang itself actually, um, you know, will provide a bit of cover from, you know, things like dust falling or light rain, and just um, enable the, the lenses themselves to, to remain cleaner and more protected um, than those that are positioned right at the ends of the barrels. These Helios binoculars come with twist-up eye cups. Um, and as you can see, you, you simply uh, twist the eye cup up or down um, to position them um, at, at the correct distance for for you, you know for yourself. So um, for most people who don't wear glasses whilst they're um, using the binoculars, they would ha probably have them on their fully extended setting like this. Whereas if you if you if you do wear glasses, um, you you possibly or most probably will have them on the fully retracted. There will be some people out there that you know perhaps the, due to the shape of their face or the thickness of the glasses they're wearing that will need to position them sort of at a, at a distance in between fully extended and fully retracted. The, the actual mechanism on these is, is nice and smooth uh, and whilst there is, as you can see over here, just a tiny bit of free play um, right on the end, you know, halfway down this, this doesn't actually happen, it's, it's actually only right on the end. The amount that it's, 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 they sort of move about is, is really minimal and, and not something that I'd be overly concerned about. Um, the mechanism itself, as I said, is nice and smooth. And whilst technically I think it does have two, one, uh, see, two intermediate stops between fully retracted and, and um, fully extended, um, the actual the, 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 the sort of positiveness that it sticks, it get in, um, that it clicks into these um, midpoints is, is perhaps not as, as quite as obvious as I find on some binoculars. So you just have to, uh, you know, just, it's, again, once again, it's a very small um, thing, but it, you just have to spend a bit more time to get them in that position, just so that they'll stay there for you, um, should you, you know, want to use them, at, you know, at the setting. The diopter adjustment ring is located in the usual place um, on these Helios Night Sport binoculars. Um, that is um, just underneath the uh, right eyepiece over here. And for those who don't know, um, this uh, adjustment allows you to um, well, independently focus the, the right side um, independently of the left side of the binocular. And so in, in this way you can calibrate the binoculars um, to suit your particular vision, should you know, you know your, the, the difference of vision between your right and left eyes not be exactly the same. You can actually just you know, calibrate them slightly. Because of this, um, the diopter um, you know, only really in theory gets, needs to be used um, when, you f when you first set up the binoculars for yourself or if you have to share it with someone else. So because of this, the best ones uh, out there um, are lockable, so that once you have your setting, you can lock it in place, and it won't move by accident. And whilst these um, are not lockable, it's not um, uncommon at this price for them um, to be not lockable, um, there is a you know, reasonably good amount um, of resistance to movement, so you know, unless you were to knock them, it, it shouldn't move too easily by accident. Um, having said that, um, what's slightly different about these is, as you can see here, they've got two uh, little knobs on the ends that, that whilst these do make it easier to uh, adjust the, the setting, I feel um, the downside to this is that, you know, there's more chance of, of say, this point over here being knocked and, and the, your setting actually being moved. Related to that, um, once again, and this is really typical, um, apart from the, the zero and the plus and minus points over here, there's no actual scale. On the, on the actual uh, marked on on the the body of the binocular or, or lines or anything like that. So should your um, particular setting say be over here, for example, um, unless you make a mark on on the body of the binocular, uh, you, you know there, there's no point of reference over there. So you know should your your setting not be um, neutral or something like that, I would suggest just getting a, a permanent marker or, or making a little etch with a knife or something, just so that if it were to move by accident, it's quite easy to. And return it without having to recalibrate the binoculars. 
whilst it isn't made from metal like some of the the better ones are I do quite like the the focus wheel on these um, Helios binoculars uh, firstly to begin with it's it's nice and large um, well positioned in in the center over here so um, for most people you know I sort of have average sized hands it, it, it should be nice and easy to reach um, it has this nice rubberized tracker on the outside over here um, just adds a, a level of grip um, for most you know for most of the time this won't be an issue you know the amount of grip levels is not an issue put it that way but sh you know should it be um, cold and you're wearing thick gloves um, you know having a, a focus wheel that's um, it won't slip under your gloves and um, just makes that you have a more positive uh, feel to it and you know more chance of being able to adjust the, the focus accurately the mechanism itself um, it turns really nice and smoothly um, and there's just enough um, you know sort of uh, friction or, or resistance to move it so that it doesn't spin around too easily or make it too hard to turn which you do find sometimes so it's really nice and smooth there's no free play you know or, or sticking points along the entire focus um, plane and um, it's nice and smooth the whole way around uh, having said that the, the the gearing on the on the mechanism itself it takes just over um, two full turns of the wheel to go from near focus to far focus um, or vice versa um, this is what I'll describe as a sort of uh, quite lowly geared mechanism in that um, it requires a, a reasonable amount of turning to make large adjustments um, the downside to this being that uh, uh, large focus adjustments take just that little bit longer because obviously you've got more turning of the wheel to do the um, positive aspect to this is that you know really making really small focus adjustments um, is that much easier than, than a more aggressive um, geared mechanism where even the slightest movement moves the, the focal plane quite a long distance. The distance between the eye cups um, is adjusted in the usual way by opening and closing the central hinges over here. Um, the hinges themselves are really um, look really robust and secure there's no free play or movement or anything like that that would be terrible um, and so um, are nice you know should remain nicely aligned um, opening and closing them there's enough sort of resistance to movement um, just so that whatever setting you have it'll stay in that position um, just so that the your eye cups um, or the lenses it can can match um, up with the distance between your eyes These Helios Nitro Sport binoculars are um, tripod adaptable and by what we mean by that is this dust cap located on the uh, front bridge over here can be unscrewed as you can see and that reveals a, a recess over there or a threaded recess um, that will um, is the same size as a, a standard um, tripod adapter and, and thus um, pretty much any standard uh, tripod adapter will um, will fit into these binoculars and then from there you would take the adapter and fix that to your tripod the head of your tripod um, should you wish to the included neck strap that you get with these Helos binoculars uh, is fairly typical for a binocular within this sort of size category and price category um, in that I'll say that it's as you can see it's unbranded and looks pretty generic the the actual padding itself is, is, is quite good, it's, it's nice and thick um, and looks to be and feels um, nice and comfortable. Uh, it isn't, um, some of the, the better neck straps out there will have a, um, a more grippy surface underneath uh, this part of the, the strap just so that it, it, it helps it to stop it sliding from you know, around your neck and, and your shoulders. Uh, that's a minus po minor point that uh, is missing on these. The, padded part that connects to the um, the, 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 part that, uh, the the part nylon strap that connects to your binocular as you can see as made from a, a sort of a fake uh, leather um, material the stitching itself looks to be pretty good uh, and shouldn't come away too easily I mean it'll break apart too easily um, and, and I, I think will be fairly whilst it doesn't look the best it, it should be fairly long-lasting um, the actual strap itself connects to the binoculars in the usual way. Um, you'd, you'd go through the uh, little loops on the side of the binocular over here, back of themselves and, and through the slider just so that you can adjust for length. So all in all, um, 
whilst the, uh, the strap itself isn't you know the most luxurious um, I think it will get the job done and you know it looks to be of a reasonable as I said uh, it, you know at this price range it's, it's about uh, on a par with what you, you would find the included carry case uh, is it, once again like the next strap fairly typical for a binocular within this price category um, it's quite generic um, as you can see over here, it's um, to gain access to the, the inside is via this uh, flip over lid. And as you could hear there, on, the, on I'm sure you could hear on the video, um, it is held closed via, via this really um, good, good piece of Velcro. So um, in terms of security, it's um, you know, look, not going to be as secure as a, as a zip, but you know shouldn't come away too easily by accident. But having said that, um, that noise, um, Unless you're careful, um, say if you're, you know, stalking a, um, you know, timid animals or, or birds, um, when you open that, that, that could be enough noise to easily frighten something away or give your location away. So it's just something to keep in mind. The actual bag itself looks reasonably well made. It has a uh, belt bu buckle, at, uh, belt loop at the back, sorry, so that you can thread it uh, and have, have it hanging from your hip, should you wish. Um, it also comes with its own um, neck strap or, or shoulder strap. Um, this um, can be adjusted for length with a little slider over here and can be removed um, from the case um, by these quick release clips over here. Inside the bag, uh, as you can see, it has a, a separate pocket on the inside, sort of a, a good place to keep um, things like uh, the cleaning cloth and instructions or possibly some some keys or some money when you're out in the field padding wise it's actually quite lightly padded um, and so won't pr uh, provide as much protection as you know sort of the better cases out there in terms of fit uh, the binoculars fit do fit nicely within the bag um, as you can see I've got the eye cups fully extended and if I replace the um, protectors on the top over here um, it's still quite easy to close flip over and close the lid um, I can't tell you how often and how many binocular cases that I come across where um, it, unless you twist down the eye cups um, it, it makes it quite difficult to to close the actual case which can get really annoying I mean here even if we had the the neck strap included in the binoculars um, it will be possible sorry, to close the bag and carry it around that brings an end to this quick little video um, just going over most of the external features on these Helios Nitro Sport binoculars. As I mentioned at the start of the video, uh, you know, for the full and completely in-depth review on all the optics and everything else, um, please just click on the link either um, in the video here or on the description below, depending on which platform you're watching this on. Um, once again, thank you very much for taking the time to, to watch this and I'll see you again next time.